Oh, hallelujah. This morning, as I say, welcome to Global Evangelistic Center here in Kissimmee, Florida. We have never been as connected as we are with our city. I've been called upon many times to come and pray for the city, and I love our city. And Global Evangelistic Center is a part of our city, and we grieve the loss of the two fine officers that were lost in the line of duty. So we keep them in our prayers. Please be seated. In your Bibles, Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. Jacob said, O God of my father and God of my father Isaac, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of the loving kindness and compassion and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant with only my staff long ago crossed over this Jordan. And now I have become blessed and increased into these two great, these two groups of people. <laughs> Save me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he will come and attack me and the mothers with the children. And you, Lord, said I will certainly make you prosper and make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be counted. We are continuing the biblical narrative of, of Jacob and Esau to address the age-old provocative issue of what some may deem to be the cheated birthright. From this, we have been drawing out seven powerful and very current day relevant exegetical points. Uh, I've addressed five so far. One, God can interrupt the natural cause of time to reverse the curse or to reverse the plans of the enemy, depending on his sovereign will. Number two, desperate people do desperate things. Number three, we must learn to appreciate what we have before it's gone. Uh, number four, generational curses are a reality. Number five, forgiveness must come from our heart or our generations will always live in strife. We now move on to the sixth and the seventh points in the seven exegetical points. The sixth and the seventh points we will address together because they really substantiate each other. The sixth point. We will always be a grabber and a deceiver Unless we have a Ford Jabuk, a nature change experience. And the seventh point, not because it's legal. Does it mean that it is ethical? Not because it's legal. Does it mean that it is ethical? You, you see, these... Two points go together and substantiate each other because regardless of the sovereignty of the plan for the switcheroo <laughs> uh, to take place with the birthright, Jacob has come to a place of acknowledgement of the corruption of his grabber and his deceiver ways before he meets Esau, first of all, by, by, by waiting until his twin brother was weak, exhausted, and hungry to, to, to insist that he would 
only feed him homemade soup if he would sell him his birthright. Now, 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 I know I, I kind of joked <laughs> about th this lentil soup uh, and how it didn't even have meat in it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, lentil soup is really beneficial for you uh, as it is rich in fiber and, and protein, minerals and vitamins and j just for the health freaks out there. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that 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 is not the significant thing about this transaction uh, because when we focus just on the soup we miss the bigger issue of the lack of appreciation of the birthright which included the inheritance of the Abrahamic covenant as outlined in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 to to, to make the inheritor of the promises uh, the offspring into a a great nation genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 now now the lord uh, had said unto abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show thee and i will i will make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and, and curse him that curseth thee, and in, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, 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 a couple quick things here. Uh, the, the, the blessing of God is conditional. You can't expect to be having the blessings of God if you ain't living right. Because just as uh, healing is the children's bread, the blessing of God is for the people that are in covenant with God. Amen? Uh, and in here we see a specific land, uh, and it's a prophecy of national greatness. Uh, and we see also personal and, and, and generational blessing. Oh, it's so important to get the blessing from from your elders from from, from y y your mommy and your, your your pappy that's why i love to be around old people <laughs> and old people don't even think they old anyway <laughs> and it talks about a greatness of reputation it means you, you're going to do some marvelous exploits it's going to give you a good reputation uh, people come when your reputation is great uh, that, 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 that's why when they hear that there is a healer in the land, they, they make a trip to see the healer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amen? Yeah. Uh, and it's a, it's a blessing to others on a global scale. You, you see, the Abrahamic covenant is important because it deals with a land covenant. Uh, it deals with a Davidic covenant, uh, which is land, seed, and it deals with the new covenant. Uh, which is the blessing that we inherit. You, you see, I, I bring all of this out to show you what all Esau sold for just a pot of soup. And added to that, according to Hebraic custom, uh, what would have been the double portion of his father's inheritance as the eldest son. Now, 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 wh wh while God's word is very clear in revealing that it was Esau's own corrupted nature that caused him to sell his birthright, it still does not give Jacob a clear pass for what amounts to an action from the fruit of a grabber nature. <laughs> and the, the Bible certainly does not sanction Jacob and his mother's act of deceiving Isaac on his deathbed and fraudulently pretending to be Esau so that he, Jacob, could also receive his father's blessing, which would amount to being the second time he had been deceived by his brother and as many of us would probably say in our present day, uh, th th that act right there <laughs> would have been the last straw. <laughs> that, 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 that would have been the last straw to break the camel's back. 
<laughs> in other words, properly put for, 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 for those at Harris and all prim and proper, the final irritation or problem that stretches one's endurance of patience beyond uh, uh, the limit. <laughs> I prefer that's the last straw. <laughs> Sister Army, get ready to read for me Genesis chapter 27, verses 35 to 36. Genesis chapter 27, verses 35 to 36. Now, 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 Jacob's act of fraudulently stealing his twin brother Esau's uh, death bed was the straw that broke his camel's back, so to speak. And after he discovered what he had done, he cried out with a great and extremely bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me! Even me also! Oh, my father! Genesis chapter 27, verses 35 to 36. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Wonderful. Isaac said, your brother came deceitfully and has fraudulently taken away your blessing for himself. Mm. Esau replied, is he not rightly named Jacob the uh, supplanter? Mm. For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright and now he has taken away my blessing. Mm. Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Not because it's legal. <laughs> Does it mean that it is ethical? Not because it's legal. Does it mean that it is ethical? Now, in my, in my last message, we covered what Isaac had bequeathed for Esau as a result of him losing his birthright and, and his father's blessing, uh, which was, as Scripture shows us, uh, a high honor, uh, and losing his blessing was equivalent to being cursed, and that is uh, is a spiritual law. So, so uh, nowadays it's a law that's so often overlooked, but but still fully true to this day. In my last message, we we covered what Isaac had bequeathed for Esau as a result of him losing his birthright and his father's blessing which whether he realized it or not, and I suspect he did, is really quite profound because it takes into account the natural response from being cheated, uh, from being connived b b by people uh, and deceived uh, and shows us that uh, only when we break loose uh, from anger and hatred uh, will we be able to tear the yoke off our neck and be free from the spirit of murderous anger and revenge? What a timely message for today. I got to be honest with you, I almost lost it this week, Monday. Monday, I went into Arby's restaurant. Uh, and as I went into Arby's restaurant, here I am by the drink stand. And in walks this rambunctious racist saying, these dumb niggas. And for a quick second, I remembered my martial arts training. And I was in the flesh, I must confess. And I was, the flesh told me, hit him in his temple. And I, <laughs> I, was, I just had to freeze because the guy behind him, who was a white brother say, was saying, you're a racist, you're a racist. And he said, he went on to say a bunch of other foul things about black people. And there I was, the flesh had me for a quick second, I ain't gonna lie to you. Because I also dreamt about disconnecting his windpipe for him. Uh, but I, and I, I told Alexi when I came home, I said, you almost had to stop by for your daddy. <laughs> but, I gained my composure because I realized it ain't worth it. And I realized that by God's grace and his mercy, I am not the man I used to be because I would have done something a little different. And I went and I sat and I felt these arms come around me. 
And when I looked up, it was one of my sisters, a white pastor, a lady pastor. And she said, Pastor, I just want to tell you I love you. And I got back up after she went to her seat and I said, did you hear what that man was saying? She said, yes, Pastor, we did. And we started praying in tongues the minute he walked into that restaurant. And I'm saying to myself, boy, you never know who'd be around. Because supposing I had done something, <laughs> you know, that, then there would have been all the pastors in the city, because I know so many of them, would have been praying, boy, Pastor Wallace lost it, I tell you that. You know, <laughs> but, but not by power, nor by might, but by God's grace. Even this message that I ministered last week, I'm getting some heavy feedback on it. But I, I'm going to speak what God says. I, I, and I am not afraid of the <laughs> terror that flieth by night. Because he that keepeth, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. The God which keepeth thee, he shall neither slumber nor sleep. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are very near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Oh, I know what that feels like sometimes. Twenty years pass. And the brothers once again meet. <sighs> but by his prayer and by his testimony, and the testimony of his experience uh, with that very special angel at the, the, the place that's named Peniel, the face of God, uh, saying, For I have seen God face to face, yet my life has not been snatched away. Jacob has to cross the four Jabuk. Jabuk River, which is today's Zarka uh, River, basically in the, the, the area of Jordan. 20 years passing by the sovereign plans of God. The grabber, uh, the deceiver, comes to the Jabuk. Uh, a word which translates to mean a pouring out or a wrestling and is significant because that wrestling match is not just a physical match. Uh, not just, you know, those physical matches for sport. Because even in the natural, Jacob was well advanced in age uh, at, at this time. Uh, which is really irrelevant because no mortal man can physically contend with our all-powerful and almighty God, or even any of his angelic hosts. Uh, this is a spiritual battle to complete the process of the change that was taking place in Jacob as evidenced by his prayer in Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. Jacob said, O God of my father, Abraham, and God of my father, Isaac, which means that he understood that God is a covenant-keeping God and, and the power and significance of actions and the blessing or cursing of our generations is very important to him. The, the, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will make you prosper. Uh, it means that he understood that only through a yielded will Mm -mm, the ability to choose, think, and act voluntarily, only through a yielded will to, to God can we ever hope to inherit any of his promises and that he is a God that delights in the prosperity of his servants. I don't know who likes to preach poverty, but God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the God that I serve is a God of more than enough. I... I'm unworthy of all the loving kindness and compassion and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant with only my staff long ago. Jacob 
had humbled himself and he had acknowledged that when he had nothing and when he had to travel through the wilderness after allowing his grabber and deceiver nature to, to cause bad blood to come between him and Esau, when he had nothing but his staff, which was mainly used as a navigational tool. That's a lot of people don't realize that. that in the old days, the, the Hebrews used to use that staff as a navigational tool. For us, that would be significant of the word of God and being in a position when all that we have is the word of God and all that we have is God's promises. When we take a new meaning to, to, to the meaning that the Lord is my light and my salvation and that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Ah, ah, ah. Significant for the word of God being in a position when all that we have in this world are God's promises. And then we learn that that is really all we need. <laughs> because as the 23rd Psalm tells us, the Lord is our shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield us. We shall not want because of his provision. I crossed... This is Jacob speaking. I crossed over this Jordan. Hmm. And now I have become blessed and increased into these. Now, you see, you got to understand something. A lot of people miss this. The river Jordan, its name in Hebrew means descend or flow down. And as we look through our biblical history, we certainly see that it is a river for the demarcation of being very much as a portal between heaven and earth. <laughs> Dads, get ready to read for me Joshua chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. Joshua chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. We just sang the song, When I Tread the Verge of Jordan, Bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever sing to thee. I will ever sing to thee. See, sometimes I feel like telling people when I go to traditional conservative places, get out of my way. I got to praise him. Yes, Joshua chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will, without fall, drive out from before you the Canaanite. Hmm. The Hittite, hmm. the Hivite, the Pezizite, the Girgashite, the Amorite, <laughs> and the Jebusite. Hmm. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord hmm. of all the earth is crossing over ahead ah, of you, yeah, yeah, yeah. leading the way into Jordan. The river Jordan is a river for the demarcation of being a portal between heaven and earth. Uh, and was where 50 prophets stood by its bank to watch Elijah take his mantle, his coat rolled up, and then strike the waters. And they were divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over, him and his apprentice, on dry ground. It was by the Jordan River that John baptized and when upon the baptism of Yeshua that the heavens opened with the manifestation of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach, HaKodesh, the
the Holy Spirit to express pleasure with the obedience of God's only begotten Son. Jacob said, I crossed over this Jordan, and now I have become blessed and increased into to these. You see, Jacob knew from Abraham's battle with the eastern kings <sighs> that the Jordan really marked the beginning of the battle against the Abrahamic line, the beginning of our spiritual warfare. Psalm chapter 42, verses 6 to 8. Donnett, get ready to read that for me. Saints, let me tell you something. It is a spiritual battle that we must wage if we ever expect to see the manifestation of our blessing and increase that no matter what you may have to go through, even if the battle seems more than you can bear, that Jordan's supernatural portal will open for our provision for our deliverance and for his miraculous intervention. Oh, why art thou cast down, O oh my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. God had hit it 42, Psalm 42, 6 to 8. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the mm. hill his Mizar. Deep call unto deep at the noise of yes, thy sir. water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over mm. me. Yet the Lord will command his mm. loving kindness yes, in the daytime. Sir. And in the night his song shall be with me. Mm. And my prayer unto the God of my life. Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the loving kindness and compassion and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant with only my staff long ago. I crossed over this Jordan and now I have become blessed and increased into these, watch this, two groups of people. Now most people miss that. But the mystery here is who are these two groups of people? Because it's doubtful that, that he's talking about his biological offspring because he has four wives. Bilhah, Zilpha, Leah, and Rachel. Uh, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps he is talking about the messianic spiritual offspring from his Judaic root which confirms our inheritance by faith by our engrafting. Most people miss that. Save me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he will come and attack me and the mothers with the children. Isaiah chapter 41. Shakara. Isaiah chapter 41 verses 10. Jacob had learned that the mighty God of Abraham and Isaac had kept him safe thus far and seen him through, uh, and that he would not leave him alone. And even though Isaiah came many years after this Judaic biblical patriarch, his words 
are just as relevant then as they are for any season, whether it be in the future or in the past. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 to 11. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Ah, yeah. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will uphold thee hmm. with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. The word of the Lord. Amen. The right hand of his righteousness is Yeshua our Messiah, because he is seated at the right hand of God. So when you get in a battle, when you go through trials, when you go through tribulation, the right hand of God will be there. Fear thou not. For I, Yeshua HaMashiach, am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. Jacob prayed the promises of God. Because he knew that God's word and his promises would never, ever, ever return to him without result accomplishing what he has called for and succeeding in whatever matter we might bring before him see you got to be bold with God you have to be able to come before God and say God it may look impossible but the God that I serve the almighty God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that does exceedingly abundantly above that which we can ask, think, or imagine. The doctors may say one thing, and I can tell you this because I've been out there enough times to see the miraculous right hand of God work. The doctors may say one thing, but the... The Lord of hosts. That means that he will battle any demon in hell for you. God will make the impossible possible. Jacob prayed. And you, Lord, said, I will certainly make you prosper and make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea, which is too great. To be counted. Watch me get in trouble with this one. You can numerically count the number of Jews orthodox in Israel. You can numerically count the number of Jews in America. You can numerically count, because I have the list the number of Jews in different places. But when you take that equation and you add in those of us that have been engrafted, we then become too numerous to count. Now, I know some of the Orthodox mm, don't have friction with that, but I got to say what the Lord says. I can count how many Jews in Israel. I can count how many Jews in America. But those of us that have been engrafted yeah. makes the equation uncountable. <laughs> Jacob has come to a place of the acknowledgement of the corruption of his grabber and deceiver ways before he met Esau. And the acknowledgement of the fact that he was an unethical person. And that no matter how fierce the battle to change his old nature. He had to get away from the noise and the distraction of people around him uh, th 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 that he may come to know uh, who he really was. You see, you see, a lot of people, they project an image. And that image is so far from the truth. A lot of people don't know the real you. 
Some people are too afraid to tell you what they really think. But God is saying, I need you alone. Until we get to that point where we overcome our corrupted, unethical human nature and our hurts, until we can stop and realize that we may not have uh, truly identified who we are. This may sound strange. A lot of people don't know who they are. And when you don't know who you are, anyone can tell you. Know yourself. When Jacob realized that it made no sense fighting with God Almighty, God spoke to him and asked him to identify his true character and nature because change cannot come until we honestly identify who we are and our strength and our weaknesses. Genesis 32, 27 and 29. So he asked him, what is your name? And I'm reading this from the Amplified. So some of you may not see what I'm about to show you. So he asked him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he declared a blessing. Now here's where most of your Bibles probably don't have. Of the covenant promises <laughs> on Jacob right there. So even though we may have thought that he outsmarted Esau to inherit the covenant promises he did not receive the covenant promises till his nature and his name was changed unless we have a true nature change we will always be Jacob and not Israel hear me well I'm not just speaking to a person. I'm speaking to a people. Yeah. Unless we have a true nature change, we will always be Jacob and not Israel. A grabber, which is not just an ungrateful and selfish person, but, but, but it also describes someone that is so moved by sensation and emotion and selfishness that they allow the carnality of their flesh, the carnality of their flesh to control uh, their lives. Unless we have a true nature change, we will always be Jacob, a grabber and deceiver, someone that specializes in manipulating and deceiving other people and living a life of deception. Unless we have a true nature change, we will always be Jacob and not Israel. Oh, Genesis chapter 32. This is where I'm ending this morning. Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac. That's, that, 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 that's a generational God. So it means that our children are covered if we come in a covenant with him. The Lord said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will make you prosper. Uh, that's a God of substance that has an inheritance for us to receive. I, I, I am unworthy. Of all the loving kindness and compassion and all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant. Even, even hear me well saints. Because there's so many people out there that like to condemn people. Even when we miss the mark. Even.
happen when we fall short of God's glory. God is faithful. With only my staff, long ago, I crossed over this Jordan. And now I have become blessed and increased into these two, two groups of people. It means that the supernatural portals of heaven will open for us in this season for blessing and increase. You got to know how to operate in the natural and the supernatural in these end times. Save me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him that he will come and attack me and the mothers with the children. God is our almighty defender and protector. No matter what you have to face, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. My God and him will I trust. I don't care what's going on out there. The God that I serve is a mighty God. And you, Lord, said, I will certainly... This ain't no maybe. This ain't no multiple choice. I will certainly make you prosper and make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be counted. Not one word. Not one word that God has promised you will return to him void without accomplishing that which it was sent forth to accomplish. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamasiah, our soon coming king, amen.